When she said, we're pregnant, it should have been our happiest moment, but the joy was strangled by the truth. I couldn't have children. In a room where truths are laid bare, I kept mine dressed in shadows. Ultimate deceit, pregnant wife's child can't be mine, is the chapter where my world turned on its head. Every kiss, every shared dream now feels like a question mark hanging over us, and I'm inviting you in to walk with me through the facade that was my marriage. Chapter 1 Ultimate Deceit Pregnant Wife's Child Can't Be Mine The kitchen's morning light caught the edges of her smile in a way that used to warm me through and through. But today, it was a cold sunrise, one that didn't reach the chill inside me. I'm pregnant, she said, her voice a melody that sounded off-key in my head. Pregnant, the word hung in the air like a thick fog, and I was lost in it, suffocating. It should have been a moment of joy, the kind where husbands sweep their wives into their arms, spinning them around in a kitchen dance-like in those old-timey movies she loves. But all I could do was stand there, with the weight of a truth she didn't know pressing down on me. I had a vasectomy two years ago. It was a quiet thing, a decision made in the sterile silence of a clinic and not in the warm chaos of our home. I hadn't told her. I couldn't. We were drifting. Two people sharing a life and a bed, but not much else. I wanted to stop the pretense of a happy family we weren't going to be. But now, her news. It wasn't just a surprise. It was an impossibility. My mind raced through the past months, searching for signs I had missed or chosen to ignore. There were late-night whispers into her phone, the click of the bedroom door when I'd come home unexpected, and the scent of unfamiliar cologne lingering in the hallway. They say when you suspect something, it's already too late. Maybe I'd known all along, somewhere deep down, where we keep the truths we're too scared to face. I thought back to the days when our love was something fierce and burning. Now, all that seemed like the remnants of a dream half-remembered. I looked at her, really looked at her, trying to find the girl I married within the woman standing before me with expectant eyes. That's... that's great news, I stammered, the lie bitter on my tongue. She threw her arms around me, her joyous stark contrast to the dread filling my veins. I can't believe we're going to have a baby, she whispered, her breath warm against my neck. Nor can I, I thought, nor can I. I hugged her back, a gesture that should have been full of love but was instead full of questions. As she pulled away, her eyes shining with unshed tears of happiness, I knew I had to find the answers. But was I ready for what they would reveal? And there it was the crossroads of my life with her. Do I step into the unknown, chasing the shadow of a doubt, or do I remain silent, living a lie as deep as the one she's woven? One thing was clear. The truth had a way of surfacing, no matter how deep it was buried. As she busied herself with breakfast, the smell of bacon filling the air, a plan began to form in my mind. I'd need proof, solid evidence of the betrayal I suspected. And for that, I needed help the kind you pay for. As she hummed a tune, flipping pancakes with a rhythm of normalcy we hadn't felt in years, I made my decision. I would hire a private investigator. Today marked the beginning of a journey, one that would either lead me back to the woman I loved or shatter the illusion of our life together forever. But as I watched her, the sunlight now fully streaming through the windows, I couldn't shake the feeling that our story, the one I thought we were writing together, had a few chapters she'd penned in secret. And so the stage was set, the players unknowing participants in a drama that was about to unfold. The question was, would I be the hero of this tale, or another casualty of love's often cruel game? <laughs>